Very first concert I attended. That's a good one. I don't know, actually. <laughs> there was a lot all at the same time, so maybe Oasis or something like that. I was playing in a keyboard show and it was, I was 16 and I walked on a stage and it had moving lights and I was mesmerized by what they were. I don't know, I just got attracted to it actually. It was more interesting than sound for me because there was more possibilities to be creative. And the first one was a 088 two preset desk. I didn't like anything about it. Brian Leach is a lighting designer from the UK. He helped me start, he gave me a lot of work and he's helped millions of people in this industry. No, I don't think so. I think you have to be part of the band. I think somewhere in the, you know, the Maldives, let's do that. <laughs> in the middle of the ocean would be fun. We started Fireplay in 2017. You know, together the vision for the company is that we can actually go in there and we can do a full turnkey solution. So someone can just call us up and we can get a complete show design, execution, direction, video content. We work with a whole bunch of studios who we know to create all those extra elements and kind of manage the whole process so that it takes the stress out of managers and promoters and the creative directors that work for the artists. There was two really big projects that we started with, um, actually three, there was The Killers. Um, we came in and we did the set design and we did help with the video content and we put the director in place, William Baker, and we came up with that. We then also did Justin Timberlake, Man of the Woods. That was our, we did everything on that from the visual design standpoint. And we did James Taylor as well all at the same time. We all came together because we'd worked on many projects over the last sort of 10 to 12 years. And we decided we just really liked working with each other and had a, a really fast way of working. So when you start working with new people and new collaborators, it's actually quite difficult because everyone works in a slightly different way. So being friends and actually enjoying working with each other means that we can do things pretty fast and go backwards and forwards and argue a lot between ourselves so that we get the best product at the end without you know, arguing with everyone else too. We're not competing lights against lasers, against video. It's always planned and, you know, if there's a video moment, the lighting will adjust to let that video moment shine through. And the same with lasers. You know, if it's a laser moment, we're going to make it a laser moment. So everyone works together rather than kind of trying to make their own piece the best it can be. We all kind of combine forces so that it, the whole thing's planned and we really kind of have the cohesive vision of what it's going to be. First elements are always come from the artist really. The way that we work best is we really like to collaborate with them. So, you know, instead of just going and pitching an idea that might be our idea, we sit in a room, we brainstorm, we come up with references and we're like, wouldn't it be cool to do this? Wouldn't it be cool to do that? And then we go and we actually come up with the first like uh, conceptual physical design. So this could be the layout of the stage or this could be where the screens go. What about this? What about that? And that's where it really starts. It starts with what, when you walk in there, what do you see? and then we can place all the video elements and the lighting elements to enhance that. But it really starts with that collaboration. And the whole time we go backwards and forwards and what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And it makes a better result because the artist ends up owning uh, the show. It's their vision rather than our vision of what their show should be. So it, it really makes a big difference. I think it was actually a combination of all of us. Um, when we did our first meeting, he, you know, he presented what Man of the Woods was and his brand guide of what the album would be, what the video styles would be, what the musical styles would be. We went and sat in the studio, we listened to the album before it was kind of finished. And he talked through that he wanted to be more organic, like flowing. He said roller coaster a lot. And he actually said hamster maze at one point. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And he just wanted a playground that could get him around the arena. And he didn't want any straight lines. He wanted everything to be flowy and curvy and organic and textured. and. That's where it all kind of started and we kind of then went away and researched and you know the one thing that really worked is uh, we probably gave him 20 different designs for a stage or a layout and then we found one and he's from Memphis so we went away and one of our guys actually studied the floodplain maps of the Mississippi as it flows through Memphis and that's what the stage design is based on. So it's kind of straight from organic, it's a river. Projection is a lot more controllable. You know, it's a lot crisper and it's a lot, you know, for the Man of the Woods, we were running in 18K. You know, everything was super high res and you can't get that resolution with video, uh, with LED right now. And, you know, the fact that we had these laser projectors, which was the newest technology, actually helped light scenes. So we were using the projection and the lighting together 
to create this whole environment. And sometimes when you use LED walls, they overpower a little bit and they're not as controllable. And I think it's just, you know, it's a little bit more cinematic. And I think that's what we wanted for that experience. It was this huge widescreen canvas. And I think if we'd have gone LED, it would have been a different show. It wouldn't have been as organic either. I think it's important because one of the things that was important to us actually at that point was to, you know, something amazing about that show is everywhere you watched it from, it was a different show. So if you were in, in the middle of the screens, it was completely different to if you were in the, the arena lower bowl, but they were both amazing shows. You got to see different things. So having this thing snake through the arena and making it almost like you were part of the environment was really important and I do think it's the way it's heading because people expect that now, they expect different things and you know, just sitting there and watching a, a blank stage now is, is something we, I think we've moved past. So the bigger shows now all try to involve the audience somehow, get the artists close to them and it gives for a better show. Like people are so excited when he walks down that ramp and he comes really close to them and I think that's an incredible part of what we get to do is bring that experience to people. I'm always looking for new technology and new things and sometimes it's, you know, the best ideas we've ever had and the best kind of new tech we've found hasn't actually been the stuff that was meant for live and, you know, you see something and you go out there and you're like, I'd really like to use that and we might try and develop it and, you know, and take it and turn it into something that works for the for the show. The laser moment there is, it's actually not new technology that we use there, it's, it's pretty old technology but we just use it in a different way and you know, one of my partners, Kelly, came up with the idea of trying to do this surround moment in the middle of the stage. And we kind of played with it a few nights. And when we started to get it working, we, we sat JT down and showed him it. And he was just like, OK, I got it. And he came back an hour later and he'd written a whole musical track. And he was like, program to this. And that's what we did. And it came from there. And he sat with us for probably two nights. And we'd go through every little cue and we'd adjust the audio and then we'd adjust the lighting and then we'd adjust the lasers. And he'd be like, what if we did this here? And what if I moved here? And it was a real kind of, that was his, his moment that he really wanted to tweak and play within that show. And it came from all of us. It was a big, it was probably 10 people that were involved in creating that little 20 second piece. And it was actually really amazing to watch it come together. Basically, it's just a beam that you can move around, but as long as it's done right and people take it to the next level, all those new technologies and, you know, it's now coming into projection and it's coming into moving lights. So I think laser's a really good way to go and I'm excited to see what happens. So one of the things that I always do is when there's a new fixture, I'll take it and we'll put it in a dark room with a load of smoke and we'll put it against all the fixtures I know. So, you know, I still go back to the VL3000 a lot because that was the big light that I first started with, but... Um, a lot of the recent tours, we're trying to get, you know, smaller, lighter, faster, everything. And the spiky has been something that really kind of stood out. In fact, I think that's the, the light we have the most in Man of the Woods. We needed a little light that fitted in a small space and was kind of bright. And we actually use it not just as the effect light it was designed for, but I use it for key light sometimes and things like that. So that light was pretty crazy. And then obviously the Unico, that's the big beam light that we've discovered and it does an incredible job of punching through and over the top of everything that happens and it also looks fantastic as a key light so that's how he's lit we, we use a bunch of unicos on follow me and that's how we light jt this time uh, i wasn't really a fan of the one for some reason it, it didn't really work with me and then as soon as they introduced me to the two i was like yes this is perfect and that's the last time i've used a different desk so i've used it since then i think the first show was uh, kylie minogue the uh, Aphrodite tour and it just lets me do it fast the way I want and it, with all the other consoles I had it was always an issue of speed or timing or you know a lot of my shows are really musical and there's a lot of hits and there's a lot of it's really important that everything's timed perfectly and most of the other consoles can't keep up with that and the MA as soon as we got into the like the figuring out timing and getting things on a you know an 800 light rig it's really important that everything stays in time and the way that they do the distributed processing and the way that the systems go together and two people can be working at the same time. It's just, there's nothing like that out there. So if, if I'm running the show, say we do a one-off or something like that, it will always be live. There's time codes there so you can be create the same show every night, but the time code shows that I do have that there is actually me playing it anyway. So I don't go in there and fix it. It's me playing live and it's just, it gives the artist me playing back the show, but someone else running it. But yeah, from same thing, musician background, like like to play along, that's where we started. So, you know, if you can't program it in a way that can be run live, you shouldn't program it like that. 
I think it's, you know, work hard and take the opportunities when they come. And when you get the opportunities, you know, make sure that what you're delivering is amazing. So just think about it a little bit. And it's not always about everything moving and flashing. Sometimes it's about not doing anything. So less is more is always a good term. Light and dark.